us have to make sure that we know and understand that government is put in this world for the same reasons that God has put the other divine institutions because this makes the world that God has established that which the church can grow in. That's the home and the church. But then we come to the reason that this has found some distastefulness whether it's intended or misunderstood amongst our brethren. In 1916, Charles Taz Russell died. Now I noticed that some of them call him Taze, like a taser. I call him Taz. I really don't know if I'm pronouncing it right or not, but anyway, he died. He was in control of a religion that was not too large in numbers but was growing quite comfortably called Bible Students. He had begun his Bible instruction under a time setter, William Miller. He and Ellen White were members of the same denomination and you know she's the one that started the Seventh-day Adventist. When Russell died, he died at the very beginning of World War I. His will left instructions for certain men to succeed him in control of the quote unquote Bible students. They'd been run out of Germany in 1930s because of their indifference to government. And believe it or not, because of the articles that were written in 1925, the successor to Russell, who bears the name of Judge Rutherford, who, by the way, was never a judge, never was a lawyer, never was elected as such, disdained everybody else that had a name, but he carried his, and he wasn't uh, pro uh, reg uh, regulated by the rules of any government to wear. Judge Rutherford and the other directors were able to maneuver the proxies of the corporation that emerged from the death of Russell, and he came out to be the president of the Watchtower Society. In order to quiet the furors that arose from the high-handed rape of the organization, he needed help, and the help he needed. It was World War I. Rutherford and his cult took a strong anti-American stand. In all their letters and their bulletins and their articles and the Watchtower Track and Bible Society. And it was so strong that he was brought to court in Atlanta in 1925. He and other members of that organization and were sentenced to 80 years in the penitentiary for un-American activities. The court in Atlanta sentenced him to the penitentiary. And all he did was write letters and articles contradictory to the war effort that the United States had entered in World War I. This made him a hero. And this gave him something that he used to his success in the few years that he lived after this, before he died in about 1942. The reason it made him a hero is he could shun the government that he lived under and become the rightful heir of a new nation, a new organization that he would claim that would replace all the governments of men and prophesied, by the way, that by the year 1945 would all be replaced. Another thing this did was separate the Russellites from other religious bodies in the United States and make them distinct. One might remember the first Watchtower of Babylon. That is in the book of Genesis was built in defiance of God in order to lead men to safety from any possible flood which could in, in, inundate or inundate the low places. 
Well, now the second was built as a refuge which would claim millions until he said the Armageddon was over and the millennium dawn to the emergence of the New World Society for a thousand years. Rutherford had his now way of becoming the hero to all his followers. Having been incarcerated and put in jail, he, I don't know, ever spent any time there, and because the United States was victorious, along with the powers to which we were allied, he got enough letters and decrees written after the war had ended that he actually got off from the charge and was completely exonerated because by then I guess the government was trying to turn tail and not be the United States, trying to be something else. But anyway, in his reign, he wrote many articles hated government, despised any kind of discipline. Any time that a government or anything like that gave him an order, it was his mind to destroy it. So this war effort gave him the reason to get rid of some of the people that was a part of the organization that wasn't against him. Then he came up with another. He began to purge his organization. He purged his organization over supposedly doctrinal matters. And as these doctrinal matters were through, he had left some of the quorum of men that he had when he began with which he could work. Then he descended to the lower ranks. He announced a regimentizing of the individual congregations to demand the counting of the time they spent witnessing Another Fuhrer arose. But when it was over, he had an organization in tow that was strong and slim and elite. And with individuality gone, he could not uh, worry about the amount of money that was coming into the society, but he could set the amount by demanding how much time each member of the new organization would bring in. Because he set the time that each individual had to go and sell his booklets or produce converts or witnesses or contacts. And the money that came pouring in gave him a control and the persons who didn't like what he was doing could either get in or get out. The proof was they met the quotas and he succeeded. Then in 1933, when Hitler was beginning to take over Nazi Germany, the Bible students were kicked out. And there had been a wing of their denomination that had begun in Europe. And they built a new stronghold in Germany. And they changed their name from Bible students to Jehovah's Witnesses. And from then, then till now, have worn that name. But what I want you to get uh, to across to you and to understand with you is that the idea of the hatred of government, the disrespect and the disingenuousness of political powers was that which was never taught in the governments, I mean, in the Church of Christ in the first 150 years of its existence in this country. Now I know that we've got a lot of bad politicians. But the reason we probably have a lot of bad politicians is we've not been as concerned as we should be in making sure that the political leaders that we have are not in there for the favor of man, but for the favor of God. And just to get up and down or destroy or contradict the concept of government is contradictory to the Word of God. We're commanded. We're told. We're instructed. And in doing so, we are made compliant to the command of God to support governments because God has made them in existence as He has willed. He sets in government those whom He will. Be it good or bad, the concept of government is from or of God. 